Hi, Chris Potts here. This short video covers the theory of proper names that we'll assume throughout the corridor, and it's also an excuse for me to show you a bunch of videos of my adorable cat, Osgood. Just to orient you, we'll be working with the handout called Interpreting Proper Names, which also has deep ties in with our foundational handout slash reading called Perspectives on Meaning and Interpretation. Let's start with the technical star of our show. That's the interpretation function, uh, which we symbolize with these double brackets. The idea behind the interpretation function is that we feed in pieces of language, words, phrases, sentences, and so forth, and what comes out are meanings. Now, what are meanings? As you saw in the Perspectives on Meaning and Interpretation handout, that's a hard question to answer in general. Uh, meanings could be chunks of objective reality, or hypothetical realities, or mental representations, or something else entirely. However, for our theory of proper names, meanings are very simple. Meanings are just entities in the world. And these are, of course, non-linguistic objects. So language in and non-linguistic objects out. The non-linguistic objects are our reference. And on our theory of proper names, the interpretation function captures a very particular linguistic convention in the sense of the David Lewis reading from our foundational reading slash handout. Now, by and large, the conventions of your language are fixed and beyond your specific control. You don't get to unilaterally decide that table means chair. You can try to introduce new words into the lexicon. For example, I'm a big supporter of nibbling as a gender-neutral term for nieces and nephews. But I'm not sure whether it's going to catch on despite the efforts of a loosely organized but still large group of advocates. And of course, you might try to decide to co coin some new slang term like streets ahead to mean cool, but there's no guarantee that you'll succeed at that. In general, the conventions of the language emerge from usage in the population, and so no one person has complete control over them. A major exception to that is the proper name. When we get to the semantics of proper names, we find an area where an individual can, if the circumstances are right, have complete control over what convention gets established. The relevant equation for proper names is given here. The core idea is that proper names directly refer. The incoming linguistic item here is the proper name Osgood, and what comes out is actually my cat. I would love to actually hold up my cat for you on video to clarify that we're talking about the creature here, not a representation of the creature, but that would probably ruin Osgood's day. She's a very nervous cat. So I'll just show the picture, but keep in mind that language comes in and an actual real-world creature comes out, and that's Osgood. As you can see here, I've given some examples involving Simpsons characters, Bart and Burns, with these drawings intended to signal that the outputs are entities and not language. But of course, for this video, we're focused on my cat. The idea behind this theory is that there's an initial dubbing event, a ceremonial event in which the entity gets named. It could be a religious ceremony or something more bureaucratic like signing a birth certificate, or even something really informal as it was for Osgood. For Osgood, my wife decided that the name of our cat would be Osgood. That was the dubbing event. She told me about this decision, and in telling me about it, she established a convention of the language. And then that convention can spread through what we call a historical network of users, as we tell friends, and they tell friends, and so forth. There's an interesting side discussion we could have here about exactly what happens if another speaker of our language uses the name Osgood with the intention of entering into our historical network of users, going back to my wife and her dubbing event, but in fact has a different referent in mind entirely. I think we can agree that there's a clear sense in which this user is mistaken about the language, or at any rate that there's a mismatch between what she said and what she intended to say. Finally, let's confront a tricky issue that might have occurred to you. Simple equations like this introduce a lot of potential uncertainty. There may be many entities with the name Osgood. To address this, I can clarify that my cat's full name is Osgood Lippincott Shannon Gates Rockefeller Gilbert Flackpots, but that's entirely to maximize her chances of winning a major inheritance from real and imagined wealthy ancestors. But of course, we usually just call her Osgood, and we understand from the context of use which historical network we're trying to connect with. Finally, I'd like to add that if you want the fun and excitement of establishing your own linguistic convention, then adopting a pet is a great way to do that. We got Osgood from Pets in Need. They have lots of adorable creatures waiting to be adopted. In my experience, these creatures do not mind if you redub them to establish new historical networks, although you might want to consult with them first before doing that.